Now moving on to our next submitter, I would invite Michael de Hamel to the table. Um, Michael, you're presenting a long-term plan submission, um, and there's five minutes set aside for you to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Do I need to press the button, or...? Um, nope, you're on already. I'm all OK. Now, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I was going to start off this afternoon by saying, let's be quiet for five seconds. I won't take quite that long, but I think I hear a sort of distant rumbling noise. And that's not a rumbling of the air conditioning or the video system or anything else. It's the sound of a distant white elephant. <laughs> it's a long time since the decision was made by Jerry Brownlee and Bob Parker to go ahead with the stadium for Christchurch. Things have changed in the city since then. Recently, or last year I think it was, a big study was done about the viability of the construction of the stadium. But that didn't talk about the long-term viability of the stadium and whether it was going to be economic to keep going. If you look at a $500 million project, if you're building a new building across the road for $500 million, you'd be expecting a return of about 10% on the capital invested. Will there be a 10% return on a stadium in Christchurch? That's five, $50 million a year, a $1 million a week. That's, what, three full houses every week. Is it likely to be the sort of return required or the set of usage required on the stadium? And so my submission was basically that the council spend a bit of time to look at the future costs of running the stadium, even things like insurance. If you've got a $500 million building, insurance will be about 1% of the cost of it. So even insurance is going to be $5 million a year. And my submission was really calling for a delay so that a proper study can be done of the long-term viability of the stadium. Now, actually, since then, I've been listening to quite a lot of your submissions on the live stream and read quite a lot of them. And I find that the council has had a very large number of submissions calling for extra money to be spent on all sorts of projects. If you look at the stadium and think of deferring it for a year for further study of its long-term viability, lo and behold, you've also deferred the expenditure for another year. You've saved yourselves, I don't know how much in the first year, possibly 20 or 30 million in the coming year. That amount, it would provide a relatively simple way of funding quite a lot of those things that people say are essential. The essential social services, the essential halls that need fixing, the potholes, the water supplies, all those other sorts of things. It's a relatively simple way without actually upsetting anyone. One of the things about the stadium has been that we haven't noticed the rugby union or organisers of rock concerts or anything else queuing up to the council saying, when's it going to be ready? When's it going to be ready? Can we sponsor it? Can we organise it? Can we contribute towards the cost? It just hasn't happened. There isn't the interest there. And secondly, there's the reported interest um, and the anecdotal things that a lot of the trouble with the potential housing in the central city is because people are afraid of living next door to a noisy stadium where there may not be parking, where they're going to get interrupted, where they've got noise booming out from concerts and so on. If the stadium is deferred at least for a year, it'll give a chance to study these. In fact, do those sorts of studies that would have been done under the Resource Management Act if it hadn't been deemed a, what do they call it, an essential service or something by Jerry Brownlee and Bob Parker. Um, I ask you to um, do a proper study of the long-term viability of the stadium and at the same time gain the benefits of saving some money in the meantime. Happy to answer any questions. Great, Michael. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Tim. Um, two quick questions. Do you know what the uh, possible econo economical benefit has been from the, each of the last three concerts that were held here in Christchurch, like Phil Collins? I no, no, don't know any of those sorts of things, I'm afraid. I'm, uh, a lot of the material is confidential. Well, uh, th that's been made public anyway, but that's, that's yep. there. Uh, the other one is, do you know prior to the earthquake, who was the largest employer of part-time work for students in the South Island? I would think the hospitality industry. Um, it's, it was actually the um, uh, uh, the stadiums. Yeah, may, so may there, well are some, there are some positives, but anyway. Yeah. All right, thank you, Aaron. Yeah, I I, I respect the um, the point you made around the cost per year of of a return off a building, but the number you quoted of the fifty million, we've and the public have been shown that the turnover to the city is, is well in advance of that, including well, the I'm, hotels. I'm not sure about that. In the um, 
feasibility of construction study, mm. there was a, a figure given that was plucked, I think, from Christchurch NZ that said the next net cost to the city would be after completion about $9 million a year. It didn't say, for example, whether that included the insurance cost. It didn't say whether that included maintenance. That was a running cost. It may have included electricity. It may not have. It may have included a contribution towards rates. It may have included the consequential parking costs or public transport costs or anything else. I don't know. It's very hard to tell. But if you were a, a business, if you were a Fletcher Challenge wanting to build a new office block across the road here, you'd be looking at a ret- for 500 million, you'd be looking at a return of at least 50 million a year on it from leases and direct things in order to pay your way, pay your insurance and give a return on the capital. So, Michael, thank you very much indeed for the time taken coming along to speak with us this afternoon and also for the written submission. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. So, our next submission.